The following footage is brought to you by WouldYouKindly.com. It seems that the post-apocalypse and the fantasy genres are all the rage nowadays. If it has a mutant zombie or an ugly troll, it sells pretty well. As for me, I'm more of a fan of the cyberpunk genre. You can keep your barren wastelands and your hobbits, give me robots and blinking lights. Now games like Deus Ex and Syndicate are all trying to bring it back, but where it was really big was the 80s and 90s. Today on The Game Machine, we take a look at one of these games, Excalibur 2097 for the SNES. That's X. Caliber, with no E, replace the C with a K. So is the cyberpunk platformer worth your time, or should you be playing Deus Ex Human Revolution? Find out as the game machine starts now. In the year 2097, things are pretty crappy. Neo New York is taken over by evil gangsters headed by a dude named Raptor who apparently don't like people going to parks. He has monsters known as Morphs who make people miserable. But two people stand up against him, Slash and a woman named Alex. Slash wields Excalibur, the mystic sword, and Raptor wants it, and realizing that he can't bribe them, he steals the girl. This of course pisses off Slash, and now he wants to go after Raptor and his whole crime organization. The story seems really cool, though its dialogue is horribly cheesy. Lines like his sword can cut through things like rancid butter, and people not being able to go to parks is mentioned a lot. And here's a spoiler for you, just a warning, gangsters, gangsters from, from another, another dimension. dimension. Yes, gangsters from another dimension, not making this crap up. It's worth playing the game to get to the cutscenes where you have to go up against the bosses and hearing all the random batter and how wonderfully bad it is. To be honest with you, I really liked it, but if cheese isn't what you're craving, then you won't like it. Did I mention people can't go to parks? One of the other highlights of this game is the presentation is fantastic. Enemy designs and settings are really cool and have a 90s anime look. Not only does Slash look awesome, but there's some cool boss varieties such as monsters, robots, mad scientists, odd job, and the James Bond movies, to name a few. Water effects on the first stage and rain effects on the third take advantage of the SNES hardware and look great. The system hardly ever bogs down. The music for the western version was done by famous techno group Ski Sonic, Psycho Sonic, or something or another. Anyways, I'm no techno fan, but I consider the soundtrack to be a guilty pleasure in a way, and it fits very well with that cyberpunk look. The future may not have any parks for you to walk your dog in, but it does look good and has a killer soundtrack. The gameplay is the only part I don't really truly know how to feel in Excalibur 2097. Slash can swing the sword, stab, or use a slash beam, or even block. It's really important to know what to use at the right time because some enemies, and mainly bosses, will try to block and evade certain attacks. Where this becomes a problem is that the bosses will try to block everything you do. And if you do beam slashes, that leaves you super vulnerable. Which means if you were to use it on a boss, he will immediately attack you. There is no simple pattern to attack. You may find some small strategies, but however, don't expect the boss to let you spam them with it. Even by decreasing the difficulty, the bosses will stay the same. It makes no sense. Blocking can also be a double-edged sword, as while you block and you get hit, it will push you back and can lead to some aggravating deaths. Even some of the stage design, it's hard to avoid enemies and traps. Like in the third stage, where these guys in jetpacks drop bombs on you. They will knock you off the platform, and then you have to reclimb up these sections. It's weird as the game gives you plenty of health, and the third stage has a ton of time for you to finish it in. It's like the programmers knew how hard it was, but then they decided to give you these items. While I did enjoy it, it kind of seems like the game wasn't balanced. It seemed like no matter how much you could master this game, you can get hurt. What does work is the use of the sword attacks and how it's more than just one button to attack with the sword. And it can be used in many different ways, and you do feel accomplished when you beat a tough stage. I like a challenge in games, but when a game is cheap, it can be more frustrating than fun. I 
I have a love-hate for Excalibur 2097. The presentation and cheesy cyberpunk Highlander story wins me over. However, the gameplay has great fun moments that can be killed by gameplay that seems to try too hard to be challenging. I will admit, I have never beat this game without cheating, and I did enjoy it that way, but pushing myself to do it without was easier said than done. If you like crazy hard gameplay regardless of the cheat factor, then pick this one up. For everyone else, I recommend using the infinite health cheat and enjoy the best parts of it. Till next time gamers, game on, and remember, visit your parks while you got the chance before the gangsters, gangsters from, another from another dimension, dimension. dimension. destroy them. Oh, wait a second, is that a two-player mode? Who would just tack on a crappy multiplayer like... Oh. Yeah, I get it. <laughs>